to you by Cooper Tire, and we welcome in the manager of the Yanks. Aaron is Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're doing okay. Um, you've had some time, obviously, to think about uh, the final series against the Astros. Have you come up with anything that, that would explain the way you guys did play? Because obviously you guys are better than that, okay, getting swept by the Astros. So is there anything you think that you should have done differently or players should have done differently? Uh, uh, that, that's where we should start off, I would think. Um, I don't, yeah, I think you always look back and, you know, first of all, this time of year, you know, unfortunately when there's two other teams still playing is like, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's, you know, probably the most brutal time for all of us, you know, that you, you pour so much into the season starting, you know, frankly, now you, we're starting to make our preparations and go through our, you know, free agent calls and things like that um getting ready for the next season and um you know there's so many things that go into that and and efforts from so many people and the kind of the blood sweat and tears of the year and the finality of it all you know i've, I've always kind of said it's it, it's kind of cruel the ending especially when you you know you get close and um you know so there's a, just that disappointment and that feeling of um you didn't reach the ultimate goal and that's you know it's it it makes for a hard time but you deal with it the best you can and you keep pushing on and 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 try and find where you can continue to get better is there one move aaron or one play you think back to that series that stands out among the others um i don't know i mean i look i i, I obviously i'm i know there's you know questions on on moves here and there um, I don't know. There's there's things that you toil with all the time, you know, that are that are close calls for you. Um, you know, I know t taking Garrett out was a, was a, was a big thing amongst people, from what I understand. And um, you know, it was a situation where we're in a two nothing game down and kind of up against it. Their bases loaded, no out situation, and and you're weighing like, uh, do I go for the weak contact right here? Um, you know, that, that's one where I feel like maybe I should have stayed with Garrett and, and you you go for the strikeout and then maybe go go to the pen and try and get the ground ball that you're looking for where it brings both the sinker and the slider into play with, with, with our reliever, in that case, Trevino. Um, so, you know, that, but, you know, ultimately just, you know, not being able to quite get over the hump against a team that's, you know, clearly kind of right now setting the standard in the American League and, um, you know, just didn't quite get to where we need to be. And that's frustrating. So you, you kind of look to where you can try and continue to improve. And, and that's what we'll continue to do. I, I don't know what the protocol is, Aaron, in terms of when you start talking with players. But Garrett is under control for another six years. So he's a Yankee for a long time. Have you guys spoken? Mm -hmm. Did he articulate? Why would you take me out there, Skip? I mean, I'm, I'm the ace of the staff. No, no, nothing like that, you know, and I mean, we, you know, we speak and um, no, but we haven't had that conversation of, 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 you know, why would you take me out there? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think there's anything, Aaron, like year to year, um, as far as the, the lack of sort of um, hitting in the playoffs, hitting for power in the playoffs the way you guys do in the regular season, is there any mm -hmm. mental piece that you think like, maybe gets in people's head from year to year that this is a thing that we struggle to hit the ball in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think that's frankly been a little bit overblown. If you go back to some of the series we've had um, where we have swung the bats, especially against some really, you know, good pitching opponents, which is obviously the case in, in, in you know, when you get to the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, you're always trying to find a more perfect you know, a more perfect team, a more perfect offense. You know, sometimes it's a case of getting the right guys hot in a right situation. Um, you know, sometimes it's a case of maybe, you know, missing a couple key pieces um, that you feel like really complete uh, your lineup. Um, but I do think there's a lot of series that we've had over the years where, there's that, oh, we haven't hit when actually we kind of have, you know, obviously Houston was able to shut us down. We only scored, we scored two runs twice. We got shut out once. And then I think we scored five in that last game. So, um, 
you know, and, and look, we knew going in that Houston, you know, was probably about as a complete a pitching team as we've seen in these last several years, you know, from a starting rotation standpoint to a bullpen standpoint. So we knew we were going to have to be at our best, but, um, you know, unfortunately we just couldn't break through enough against them. But, uh, you know, that's, you're always searching to get a little bit better, a little more versatile, a little more complete. And then, you know, and then having the, that, you know, kind of catching fire a little bit too. You got to have that working for you as well. You know, it's so interesting talking to you as opposed to talking to other managers and coaches in New York. Five years, made the playoffs all five years. In four of the full seasons, you're averaging in the high 90s in wins. But what separates the Yankees from everybody else, Aaron, is you're expected to win every single year. So the mm-hmm. fans look at you as being a failure for five years because you didn't win a championship of the five years. But how do you look at it internally? Do you look at what has been accomplished here in the five years as a success? Or do you look at it as the fans and say, we failed at our mission statement? Well, I don't know if I look at it either way. Look, I think we've done a lot of really good things. Um, but ultimately, look, the, the reason I came back into this you know, there are a number of reasons. You want that competition. You want to be part of a team. You want to be part of that group, that team camaraderie, um, working to build something special, all those things. That, but ultimately, it's to win the ultimate prize, you know, to compete for the ultimate prize and win the ultimate prize, and that's a world championship. So, you know, and, and you know, to varying degrees, you know, we've had a team that's at least in that, very much in that mix or in that run for it. So anytime it ends, it's a disappointment um, and, 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 and hurts a lot. You know, this time of year, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, frankly, a little bit brutal. It's the worst time of the year to have other teams still playing um, and you haven't reached your ultimate goal. And that certainly was our goal going into this season was to, you know, win a division title and get in the dance and ultimately win a world championship. And to fall short of that is is brutal. Um, but, you know, you also look back at a lot of the – you know, I think good things you, that have happened over the over those years, and and you know, realize how difficult it, it really is. The owner of the Yankees, Hal Steinbrenner, was um, quoted down in Tampa as saying, "You know, Aaron Boone is my manager. And we like the job that he's done." Aaron, at any point after this, did you think that your job was in jeopardy? Oh, I don't know. I, I you know, do you um, worry about that stuff? I really don't, you know, obviously last year, um, you know, when my contract was up, obviously that was speculated on a lot. And, and I was, I didn't even worry about it then, you know, it's like if it works out and we come together and, and work out a deal, great. Uh, We were able to do that. So I think finishing this year, I didn't look at it like that. I look at it as, you know, I've got a few years left on my contract and, the goal doesn't stop, even though there's the disappointment and the finality of the end of this season. Um, you also got to pick yourself up off the mat and understand that, um, you know, now starts the building towards next year and trying to get to this point and ultimately push through. That's what you continue to work for. And that's what you focus on. You don't really worry about the, you know, the, I guess the job security, you understand that comes with the territory. And, and you certainly understand that when you sign up in this profession or this, this role, you know, this is, it goes with it. And I understand the disappointment um, of not, you know, reaching our ultimate goal, you know, here probably more than anywhere else where that is the expectation. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't want it any other way, you know, because it matters here and you want to be part of something and doing something that matters to a lot of people. So obviously it does matter. And, and one of the main jobs for a manager and or coach is to keep the outside noise outside from players. But do you hear the outside noise, Aaron? I mean, the fan base is extraordinarily angry at you and Brian Cashman and the way this team performed in the postseason and even in the second half of the year. Do you hear that noise and does it impact you at all? I, I, I mean, I guess I don't hear it specifically. Like, like I, I haven't seen anything, for example, that you have said. You know, I, I understand you've been 
you know, raising it a little bit and getting after it a little bit. And so I'm aware of that, but I haven't seen any of it at the same time. Um, so I, I understand there's the frustration out there and, and, you know, whatever people are upset. I understand that. I, I respect that passion, and, and it's part of, you know, the great thing about being part of this organization that is that so many people are passionate and care about it. Um, you know, but I, but at the end of the day, I have a job to do, and that's to try and, um, you know, help us be the best we can be, and that's what we'll continue to work to do. Uh, obviously, the big conversation in this off season will be uh, Aaron Judge. Should the worst happen, and they cannot figure it out with Aaron Judge, is there anyone out there who you think can even approximate what he brings to the club? Well, I don't think you're going to see a season like he just had from from anyone in a long, long time, probably. You know, I mean, it's just it's remarkable what he put together. And then, and then I think, you know, maybe as important is just just what a the person he is for our team and our organization. So, um, you know, I think you guys are, certainly understand the fondness sure. I have for him and the relationship that I have with him. Um, so I hope it doesn't come to that. Um, and, you know, certainly he, <laughs> he, it's hard to think that anyone could replace Aaron Judge, um, you know, but – Hopefully, and, and hopefully, again, hopefully it doesn't come to that, and hopefully uh, we get to the point where he's back in pinstripes for, for his entire career, like I believe it should be. Um, but you, you never know where it's going to end up, mm-hmm. and if, if that comes, you've got to be able to adapt and adjust and, and, and find other ways to get things done. So we'll see how it plays out, but um, you know, hopefully it does work out between Aaron because obviously you know, he's going to win the MVP, and um, and you couldn't have a better person, uh, you know, leading your organization from a player standpoint. Uh, Fifty-two and eighteen, the first seventy games, the next hundred and one, including the playoffs, fifty and fifty-one. Have you been able to put a finger on what was the difference between those two runs? Well, I mean, I I, I, I think for a good chunk of that second half, you know, there was a month, month and a half where we were really banged up, mm. and. and and two and three week periods in there where we were really banged up, where we were, you know, kind of a little bit of a mash unit. So it was a tough, tough stretch for us, but that's the ebb and flow of the, the 162. I mean, that's, that's going to happen. That's why, you know, whenever you are at your best, you know, it's important to rack up as many wins as you can, because, you know, sometimes it's smoother than others and you're able to avoid, you know, significant injuries or significant potholes um but you gotta you know you gotta rack up as many as you can and and fortunately you know that first three three months of the season we were you know remarkably healthy overall you know we are our you know starting rotation was pretty much intact and and really setting a great tone for us our lineup was intact and we're you know just playing at a really high level obviously we had some really key injuries in that second half and you know got some of them back which helped and and helped us rally there in the in the final three four weeks of the season where we you know played better and were able to kind of put away the division um but i I think it's just the grind and ebb and flow of the season And, and if you look at it from a season standpoint to win 99 games in our division um, you know, and, and look, the East is always up there, and it's always a, a, a grind to go through. Um, um, and I think this year, maybe more than ever, just because of what Baltimore is now, and and you know, there's no there's no easy there's no easy series, and and in baseball, there's never an easy series, even when the team's not. But you had to be at your best against every team in our division if you were going to have a good series. Um, but you know, that's just the ebb and flow of the season. You know, I, I look back at 19 when we had a lot of injuries as well, and 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 we, everyone we plugged in and brought in, and you know, role players really stepped up to allow us to really avoid some of those potholes. Uh, you know, certainly we had our share there for a four six week period that really, you know, kept us from having that 105 110 win season. But you know, I, I think a lot of that was just having real key players out uh, you know during a significant stretch 
Aaron, let me ask you about shortstop. Uh, throughout the year, you were so loyal and dedicated to kind of Falefa. Uh, we would have fun arguments mm -hmm. about you know, the metrics I saw. He wasn't very good. The metrics that you have said that he, he's one of the best shortstops in baseball. But it seems mm -hmm. like, and, and you correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong, that you lost faith of him in him in the postseason because he didn't play every day. And I know it's a delicate balance about stay with what got you there or we got to make moves right away. This is a really short series. What happened with IKF? Yeah. yeah, I just I just felt like there were a couple of you know a couple of mistakes that he had or errors that he had that I felt like were you know had those they were weighing on him a little bit. And I didn't want that to be something that snowballed. And when you get into a short series, obviously you can't afford to, to do that. I also knew that over time, especially throughout the playoffs, I felt like because he always, he showed it all year. There's he's, he's a tough kid. He's resilient that I knew he'd get through it. But in certain situations, I felt like I had to go in another direction on a given game and, and felt like, you know, I had, some, I had confidence in, in, you know, whether it was a Cabrera or Peraza that I could plug in there that we're going to be able to handle it. Um, and, I, and I feel like they did do a good job. And I feel like ultimately Kiner bounced back even within the playoffs and, and handled himself well. Can he be your shortstop next year? Uh, he can be. You know, I think we got a lot of guys knocking on the door. Obviously, Peraza had a strong triple -O. And, and got to the big leagues and I think acquitted himself really well and I think um, upped, his, upped his standing, I think even in our eyes and certainly my eyes with what I was able to see out of him in, the, in that final month that I think was really valuable for him to get a little bit of that experience, to be in the environment, to also get some playoff experience. Um, he's certainly going to push for that. You know, we've got Anthony Volpe knocking on the door. We've got Thomas Walbrer, who obviously came up and did a really good job. So there's going to be that competition and um, time. And, and, and then, of course, you, you never know what's going to happen. How your roster takes you? Are there trades? Are there free agent picks ups that that change things? That you know change the landscape a little bit of your team heading into spring training, and we're a long way away from that. But I certainly feel like Kiner is, is capable of of being a, an everyday shortstop. But there's certainly going to be competition potentially for that heading into spring training. Were you concerned? Aaron? It seemed I, I know you said that he was having decent at bats. It seemed like Josh Donaldson was lost in the postseason, and I know that you. You're appreciative of how hard he plays, mm -hmm. but he just didn't seem like he was having yeah. great competitive at bats. I mean, is he the third baseman next year? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. As we sit here right now, absolutely. Um, he's, you know, certainly. I thought it was, you know, especially the standard that he set, you know, and being an MVP caliber player, winning an MVP. He's been an offensive machine, really, for the better part of his career. He. I think we all saw, I think you would acknowledge just how good he played for us defensively at third base. But I think it was one of those years for him where he was constantly, you know, searching for that consistency and that, you know, strong run. He'd, he'd have, he'd have a few games where it seemed like, okay, here we go. He's about to take off. He's about to, and then he, you know, take a step back. So I know it was a grind for him <laughs> offensively. Um, you know, I know, I know it was a struggle. Like it was frankly for a lot of, our guys in the, in, in, in the postseason where we didn't perform as well as we would have liked offensively. And that wasn't all mm -hmm. Josh. And, but the competitive at bat thing I think was there, um, you know, especially cause he was, he was one of the guys actually getting on base at a consistent clip, even in the postseason. it was just, you know, getting to that, you know, that big hit or that, you know, big swing that, that would really help get him rolling. Um, that didn't happen for a number of our guys. You know, there's a narrative that's been created for a long time, but especially this year with, with, with Gallo's comments and the abuse that Hicks got. Judge was even booed during the playoffs, Aaron, that the, mm -hmm. the Yankee fans are unfair to their own players. A two-pronged question. Do you believe that the fans can be unfair? And do you think any of your players are affected by, by how harsh the critics of the stands can be during the course of the season? Yeah, and look, I'm aware that that's gained some traction and some noise. And look, I think the overwhelming majority of our players and the feeling in our room is this is where you want to be. 
this is where you want to play. This is the fan base you want to play in front of. Does that mean that at times it can be challenging? It can be difficult? There's going to be a guy that goes through a tough period where it's weighing on him? Sure. But, you know, and I think that's part of being a major league athlete as well and being a major league baseball player, and it's certainly magnified here. So there can be some tough times. But I do feel like the overwhelming sentiment in our clubhouse amongst our guys is, man, this is where you want to be. This is where you want to do it. And, you know, so from that standpoint, like, I think that has been very much overblown. Yes, there's some tough scenarios. There's some tough situations that come up over the course of the year. But by and large, our, our, our guys – love doing it in this environment because there's, you know, we know there's going to be no better ultimate place to win. Aaron, I, I've got to ask you this because this is one of the things that you said and you, you heard I, I lit it up. I, I never understood before game four how it was made available to the players. 2004 highlights in one of the darkest moments on field in Yankee history. And nobody would have known, but you actually offered it up to the media. We, we would have known. Mm -hmm. do, with time to think about it, do you think that that was not the right move? Look, Michael, we, we do all year, not, not just in the playoffs, you know, all, you know, throughout the year at different points. You know, we send out and we, and we grab from all, you know, different sports. Um, walks of life, frankly, motivational things, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a Kobe Bryant clip or a Ray Lou, you know, we, we, we pick from different things that we think will be impactful for our players. And I, I think the only thing that was coming out of that 04 is we were in that hole. We were in the 03, oh, down, down three games, and obviously you're completely up against it. Um, I think the point was, you know, this – win a game like that was our mindset of let's just win a game and, and keep moving forward and kind of to tell the story that this is something that is yeah really difficult and we're up against it we get that but it's not something that's insurmountable and has been done before and i think it was we we pick little things out throughout the course of the season to try and uh you know help whether at different times it's motivation different times it's it's educational different times it's it's just to you know try and get our guys in the right mindset all the time but but would you understand why a new york yankee fan would be riled up that that would even be used because again it's one of the worst moments in, in the team's history yeah I, I mean i don't i think you're i think you're overstating like or i don't even know how to phrase it like over saying what what was done like we rolled out the 04 red sox highlight situation it wasn't that it was clips of just little things that you know were trying to put us in a position to understand that this has been done before and nothing more nothing less not that anything could have been done about it aaron but do you think what Judge went through at the end of the season might have had some impact on him in the postseason? Oh, I think it's possible, sure. I think it's always possible. I think it's impossible to say that, though, that that, you know, you know, that, you know, I, I know the talk of, well, did he just wear down at the end? You know, uh, I, I think he was in a good place physically. Um, I think it's fair to at least ask the question. I also think it's, unfair impossible to say yeah for what he went through down the stretch he was a little tired and run down and out of gas uh in the postseason you know i think you don't know that and we don't know that i think physically he was in a good spot um i think he hit into some tough luck in the postseason but certainly you know the standard aaron said i know you know you know you know, obviously would all love for him to, um, you know, have the dominant postseason. Um, but I, it, I think it's impossible to say. And, but, but fair to ask the question. Do you think, Aaron, that this team, I, I would, I'd be stupid to use the word torn apart. Does this have to be remade to, to get to where you want to go to ultimately win a World Series? No, 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 no. How about the bullpen? We got to get better. Right. We got to get better. Right. 
I mean, no question. And part of that is you're missing some really key pieces going into mm-hmm. a key series. So, you know, that's part of it, too. It's like part of it is being a little bit whole going into the postseason to give you that better chance or to be on better footing. That said, what we went into the postseason, we still had a chance. We still could have won. We still could have got there. We didn't. But to say, you know, to, to I, I think it's an overreaction to say, oh, we're, we're we we got to read, you know, we got too many good things going on within the organization, within our team. Um, that certainly we've got to augment it and and you know make the right moves moving forward, make the right decisions moving forward. Um, but you know we're we're very much. Right now, as we head into the off season, very much should be in the mix to be a championship contender next year. Hopefully, we do the right things this off season and in spring training and during the regular season that put us in the best position to go take our shot again. Uh, hopefully, come next postseason. But um, you know, and look that 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 chase that search for getting better and being a more perfect team is never, never relents. And, um, and we'll continue to work that, but, you know, you know, we're chasing, obviously the, the Astros in the American league right now are setting, setting the standard and we got to get up to that standard um, and, and ultimately pass that. Um, but we're also within, within range of that too. Now, you mentioned injuries, and there were injuries, and that's unfortunately been something that you've had to deal with almost every year. Something's going on. Is that anything you can look at, or is those just circumstances that go beyond anybody's control? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, you know, attrition is, is going to happen. It's, it happens with every team. It happens with every team in the postseason. Um, you've you've got to deal with it. You know, I think the two teams we're looking at right now and the Astros and and the Phillies, you know, they've had probably a couple injuries, but they are remarkable. You know, they are overwhelmingly healthy with the guys that they expected to get in there. You know, you got to deal with it. You got to be able to roll with it. Obviously, going into a postseason, um, you know, with – without a DJ and without Ben and and without F Frost and, and King, what he was in the first half of the season. And you can, you can go on from there. Those are blows blows that you've got to deal with. And, you know, hopefully you're just putting yourself in the best position to give yourself the best chance to be healthy, you know, throughout the season, but, but certainly uh, in October. You want Rizzo back? He hasn't opted out. I know he's got a second year. He might opt out. Is that a guy you want back? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, um, he's been everything we could have hoped for. You know, he's been an amazing person in our clubhouse, an amazing teammate, an amazing leader, very productive on the field. Um, I think very much cut out to play for, for our team, for the Yankees. Um, I think handles all that goes, you know, with, with playing here and, uh, you know, as one of the premium players and leaders so well. So, yeah, I would love to have him back, of course. How proud are you of Trevino and LeMayu winning gold gloves? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really for DJ because I know, obviously, it was such a tough way to end the season for him. You know, I think people forget sometimes just how really great of a season DJ was having for the first three and a half months. And then he played, tried to play through the toe injury for a few weeks, and his productions clearly dropped off. But before that injury, you know, three and a half in, he was getting on base at a 400 clip and just so dynamic in front of Judge with his ability to get on base and playing at such an elite level defensively at all the positions. And so the inauguration of, of the utility um, gold glove for him to win it, I, I know is I'm really happy for him, especially because I know how much he hated being, not being on the field in the end there. And then obviously I think everyone saw how impactful Trevi was for us all year. You know, I think you could make a case for a lot of other guys, um, defensively this year certainly judge moving over to center but obviously what he brings out there um donaldson i 
absolutely thought it should have been a finalist for the gold glove, if not winning it at third base. How he wasn't a finalist, I don't really know. Uh, but we had it, you know, that was one of the things that we tried to improve and I think overwhelmingly did. We were a much better defensive team this year and uh, it was good to see a couple guys get rewarded for that. You know, it's funny, Aaron, no one really complained about Montgomery being gone with Bader's performance in the postseason. Yeah, look, we, look. obviously that was a really tough move to make, yeah. um, you know, but we felt like we were getting a premium center fielder, and not only for this year, and, and we felt confident that he was going to be healthy, you know, in time to be back towards the end of the season and in the playoffs, but also we, we're walking into next year with a with a – with as good a defensive center fielder as there is, with also his offensive upside that he provides and a guy that we feel like really, really fit in well here and and has the ability to thrive here. So excited about Harrison, and obviously he was huge for us, uh, you know, the way he played in the postseason. All right, before we get your uh, football pick for tonight, which is obviously your Philadelphia Eagles, um, are – suffice it to say you're rooting for the Phillies in the World Series or are you just not able to pay attention to it at all because it's it's too no, difficult? Yeah, you know what? I, I mean, I've been watching and paying attention. Um, honestly, I don't, you know, as much as I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, my college SC and college football and, and, and you know, I love the Sixers and the Eagles, like, and I have some really pe- people close to me from Philly, so uh, you know I'm interested in it for them. But in baseball, like they're all opponents, so right, right. I, you know I don't really. It's not the same, not even close. Um, you know I think it's you know it's been a great series so far, and uh, be be a interesting to see what how it ends up. Do do you get you know watching the Phillies and, and you know they had I, I believe 87 wins and they're in the World Series and mm-hmm. all last off season, Aaron. The organization did its damnedest to tighten up the defense, and the defense was great all season long. Now you got a team mm-hmm. like the Phillies, who are considered to be hacks defensively, and mm-hmm. they're in the World Series. I mean, sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men sometimes go awry. I mean, is there any surefire plan to get to the promised land? No, I think I think I don't think there's a surefire, and every year, you know, a different team for different reasons and sometimes it's they get really hot sometimes they're you know usually obviously always got to pitch well on on some level whether it's lights out in the pen whether it's leaning on a great starting rotation whether it's that combination whatever it may be um there's always formulas for that team that goes on a run um i think in philly's case i think one thing about their defense is it has really improved especially here in the postseason i think stott's provided some stability for him at shortstop. Alec Baum looks like he's gotten to be at least way more serviceable at, at third base. Castellanos, who's always kind of not had that defensive reputation, has made some really good plays in the outfield. So they've played a lot better, I think, defensively in the postseason where they are right now than certainly where they were at, at the beginning of the season. All right, so I want to ask you this because I always wonder about it. You've got people like me criticizing moves you made. You've got people in the newspapers criticizing moves you've made, the organizations made. Fans are railing against you and Brian. Do you ever sit back and go, these people don't know an eighth of what I know about baseball. How they, how dare they criticize any move that I made? I mean, does it anger you when you hear about the criticisms? Um. I don't know if anger, I, you know, and, and I don't look at it you know, like the way you said it. They know it. And I, I don't. I don't have the arrogance to look at it like that. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I, I know the game. I know what I'm doing. I feel like we are buttoned up, and our coaching staff is really strong, and we got great players and. You know, we go out prepared. I feel like even going into this postseason, we're very prepared and ready to go. Um, so I try not – I understand – look, like, you know, going back to coming into this job, you know that's coming with the territory. That's just the nature of it. And so there's certain things that if I hear them specifically, we'll, I'll, you know, be like, 
come on. Like, you can get frustrated or like what. But for the most part, you understand you've got a job to do and you've got to be able to tune that stuff out. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that makes the game so interesting. And, and, and as I've even talked to you about is – it can be, you know, you search for black and white all the time, and sometimes there's there's gray there that factors in, and, and I at least respect that people have differing opinions. Sometimes it's frustrating when it's just like, well, that didn't work, and that's – so he's just re- reactionary to something that did or didn't work that may or may not have been the right move. I would say at least I think I'm very prepared and, um, you know – I believe good decisions. Uh, all right, Aaron. Thirteen and a half points. You're.